Hey guys, this is part two of the uh, platformer tutorial, and uh, in this one I will be creating a new player class. Player.java. Let's go ahead and open them up here. Um, import Java at star public class player. We're gonna have some of the basic stuff x and y, dx and dy, uh, private double dy. Um, also going to need an int width and height. This is going to be the width and height of the player. Um, I will be using a sprite later, but for now I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, just I'm going to make it the player just a square. We are going to need some booleans. Uh, left, right. <coughs> Since this is not top down, we don't have an up or down here. Instead, we're gonna have uh, jumping, and we're gonna have a falling. Also, we're gonna need a lot more stuff. Uh, movement related variables here. We're gonna need move speed, <coughs> max speed. Move speed is going to be like the acceleration. Max speed is the maximum speed that you're gonna that you're allowed to go. This is max falling speed again. Another limiter. Stop speed. This is like the friction. If you're not moving left or right, then this is going to slow you down. Uh, jump start. This is our jumping uh, vector. It should be in the negative y direction because negative y is up in Java space. And we need something to pull us back down, gravity. <coughs> so we need. Um, I'll do that later. Uh, for now, let's just go with the constructor. Um, actually, we're going to need one more thing tile map tile map the player has to know what tile map um, where uh, the tile map he needs to know the tile maps position offset all that stuff so we're gonna give the player the tile map so for player um, just I guess we can put it in the constructor tile map TM so tile map is equal to TM and now we can set some of the other stuff. Width is going to be just 20, height 20. Um, the other variables, move speed. Uh, I've already tested these variables, these values out, and they seem to be working fine. So 0.6, max speed is 4.2. Again, you don't have to follow these exactly. You can use your own values if you want. Point three, jump start. Point eleven, <coughs> and gravity. Point six four. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the update function. Actually, um, we're gonna do a couple of setters first for player movement, um, and these are gonna be public void set left to go left boolean b left equals b same thing with right oops right equals b and one more thing set jumping this time we need a condition we can't just jump anytime we feel like it we can only jump if we're not falling meaning we're on the ground. Otherwise we could do like double jumps, triple jumps, as many jumps as we want in midair and that wouldn't be cool. Unless you really want that, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, update. This is the big one, so <laughs> I'm gonna skip it for now. Um, why did I make it private? I have no idea. They should be public. I hope these are all public. Okay and draw and this draw is going to be fairly simple um 
this is what the tile map is for. First, we're going to need the tile maps x. So tile map dot get x and tile map dot get y. This is the x and y offset of the tile map. Um, let's go back to tile map first. I don't think I have any getters or setters for that. No, I don't. Okay. So let's put make some getters and get x. Get Y and setters. Set X um the sum integer and then X equals I and set Y sum integer Y equals I. Okay. So this is important for scrolling. If the tile map is scrolled, then we want to find out how much it's scrolled by using the X and Y and we want to rewind the player um, backwards that much offset in order to keep the player on the screen. Set color, we're gonna make the color uh, the player just a red square so g.fill rectangle and this is gonna be <coughs> um, the first one we're gonna use that x offset of the tile map and then x minus width divided by 2. Same thing with the y, the y offset of the tile map. And then y minus height divided by 2. And then just width and height. And that's that. Um, let's test this out. Actually, we can't really test it. So um, let's go back to game panel first and create the new player. Okay. And what else? We need to initialize them. So go into init player equals new player, and we're gonna give it remember the tile map. Player needs the tile map. We're gonna update the player, and we're gonna draw the player. Um. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's get started with the big one. Update. In this one, we are going to do several things. Um. Uh, the first thing is we want to find out what the next position is. So determine next position. So if left, obviously, um, we're gonna set the dx move speed minus equals move speed, and we want to cap it. We don't want to go beyond the max speed. So if we're going less than that, then just set it to the max speed. Otherwise, if we're going right pretty much the same thing in the other direction this is plus equals move speed and greater than max speed like that otherwise if we're not moving left or right then that means we are we should be coming to a stop if we're currently still moving to the right then we want to uh, subtract dx by stop speed. This is the friction. And if we ever pass zero, we're gonna set it to zero. Same thing for the other side. Uh, if we're moving left, that means we're skidding left or something. And we're gonna add stop speed and cap it. And, or stop it at zero. Okay, so that handles the left and right direction. Now for the up and down direction. If jumping, then um, I have the set jumping here, don't I? Yeah, jumping, set jumping. Okay, so back in update, we finished left and right, up, uh, now we're gonna do jumping. So if we're jumping, um, we're going to set the dy to the jump start move the player upwards very fast. And we're gonna set falling to true and jumping to false. We can no longer jump. And if we're falling, obviously we we have to uh, fall downwards. So that's where we use gravity. And we want to cap it at the max falling speed. So make sure you cap it there. If dy is greater than max falling speed, then dy is max falling speed. Otherwise, dy is zero because we're not falling, we're not jumping, we're 
we're on the ground, so dy doesn't change. Next thing we need to do is check for collisions. This is the hard one. Um, ooh, this one's gonna be difficult. Okay, check collisions. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to get the current um, tile that the player is on. So, uh, what we want to do is get the current uh, column, and we're going to do that with a bunch of tile map functions that we will create. Tile map that get column tile x, and uh, we need the current row tile, tile map that get row tile y. So go back to tile map. We need to get the create those getters. Um, put it up here. <coughs> get column tile, and um, well, I gave it a double, so. I'll have to cast this to an int. Also, this cast them both to ints. So, int i. So, what we want to do here is we want to find out what tile our player is on, and we're going to use this. Uh, we're going to find this out using the tile size. So, if we are at position x, then we want to return. Um, the current x divided by the tile size. So um, if our tile size is 32, and we're at position 30, then 30 divided by 32 is 0, and that's correct, we're on the 0 tile. Same thing for get row tile. We're going to return uh, y divided by tile size. That's simple. And this will get us our current uh, row and column. So, next thing we need, this is going to be our uh, next destination, our destination x and y. So I'm going to call this 2x, and this is just going to be x plus dx, and we're going to do 2y is y plus dy. <laughs> to my toy. Anyway, this is the position where we should be after updating the x and y. So, x plus dx, y plus dy. Um, we're also going to be using from now on a temporary x and a temporary y because we don't want to change the actual x and y until the end of the update. So we're, we are going to only be messing with the temporary x and y. Um, I'm running out of time in this video, so I'm going to stop it here, and I will finish up the rest of the update function in the next one. So thanks for watching.